All right, guys, I got a brand new eBay purchase. A lot of you guys mentioned Draper locks were a little bit of a challenge to get into. This is the only one I could find, at least in a decent price. I had to have it shipped from a little bitty island, you know, a little backwater place. You guys might have heard of it in the United Kingdom. Made by Draper Security. And a couple things about this lock that I think make it interesting just from outside of the package. First of all, right here it says... Uh, High security with mushroom pin tumbler. So right away we know it's got some security pins. Mushroom. So those are always fun to pick. And another little funny wording thing here on the back. So I find it in the camera lens right here. Well, they talk about their warning. Um, Draper Tools Limited will not accept any liability for loss or damage arising from incidents. This security product is designed to help prevent. <laughs> Isn't that funny? That's quite... Quite the statement of confidence right there. Hmm. Hmm. Anyway, getting down here, security. We got high little scale here, high security there, and from goes from high or 10 down to one or, and again, they say basic. So I would think high and low or high and none, but they call it level one is their basic level of security. We're somewhere right solidly in the middle of five. So a couple of interesting things. Ah, quit yakking, Bill. Let's get into this thing. It took uh, about 10 days for this to arrive from the UK by slow freight. All right, we got a couple of keys. Hopefully we don't need those guys. Uh, since it is made in the UK and they have an adequate reputation for quality, I'm not going to bother to test it. I, I have 50% confidence that the keys will work. Here we go, 50 millimeter. We got a nice wide open keyway. Um... Let me find the top of the keyway tensioner, see if this one will work. That one's just a little bit too thick. Let's try the medium one. I think that's one millimeter that ought to work. And I need a decent pick. It's a nice wide keyway, so I think I can get this little guy in there. And I can probably ride him on that ledge right there. So let's see what we got. You know, since it's mushrooms, our goal should be to get a fault set. So there's probably one standard pin, and then probably four. I didn't look at the key, but I think it's probably a five pinner. One, two, three. Yeah, so it's a five pinner. So it's probably one standard pin with four mushrooms. So if we can just get a rake, and we can just kind of randomly rake it and find that standard pin, we can probably get a fault set. And once we're at fault set, then it's game on to get to solve those mushrooms. And it's not working out quite the way I planned, so we'll just say the heck with it. Let's just go straight in, and what I'm going to do is apply very heavy tension and force everything to bind, and then I'm going to start trying to force stuff. And hopefully, I can find that standard pin and get that fault set. Okay, pin five. Come on. Give it up. Come on, pin four. He's the only binder. I'm going to have to let off my tension. He's totally bound up. There we go. Nice click. Okay, he is not liking to be bullied. So we got a good amount of precision in here, and that's a big plus. I'm going to switch picks to this guy. Same 25 thousandths thickness, but it seems like this one is getting kind of hung up, so I'll go with something a little bit less of a rise. Lighter tension the second time around. And I'm still getting almost everything binding except these first two pins. So lighten up again. That was pin three. Pin four. Where are you? That was pin one. This is turning out to be a little bit more of a challenge than I thought it was going to be, which is a good thing. OK, 
Okay, that was four. I'm really putting some serious tension on those pins now. Felt a very slight turn on the core there on pin five. I still have no fault set, and that's got me a little bit concerned. I would have thought that it would have popped by now into a fault set. Pin five is now falling back down. Come on. All right, I'm going to go back with this deep hook. Just on the off chance, something back there is a little deeper than I thought. Nope. All right, let's recock and try it one more time. All right, very, very light tension this time. I'm tired of bullying it. He's just not going to take it. Okay, and pin three is binding. Okay, very slight click. Pin four, very slight click. Pin one, very slight click. And there we go. This lock hates to be bullied. It takes a very, very delicate touch. And the odd thing is, even though they say spool pins here, I didn't detect a single spool pin. All of them seem to be standard. So it is a brand new lock and I am very, very tempted. In fact, I think I will. I'm going to put this on the machine and chop it open so we can see what's inside of this Draper Security 50 millimeters. See if they're lying about these security pins. All right, guys, I've got that machine just about as close as I can get it without boogering everything up and tearing up all the springs. But I think you can still see what's going on here. Obviously, this is the Bible, and I've kind of used a red Sharpie, Sharpie to mark where the Bible begins, and then down here is where the core is, and I have the key in it, so everything's perfectly aligned right here at the shear line. I will turn that, but uh, I'll wait till the very end, because I've got a feeling when I do, all these drivers are going to come springing down here because there's nothing to restrain them. Uh, as we thought, five pins. In the key pins, these are all standard pins, and that's really what we expect in a commercial lock that didn't do anything to the core. Why put security pins down there? But what I did expect along uh, on the drivers upstairs would have been four spools and then one standard pin to keep the, the core from flopping around. But that's not what I found. What you see here we have uh, in chamber number five, we have a very small spool with a very narrow waist and one end is thicker than the other. So the top here is actually thicker than the bottom. And that's, that's kind of neat because when you look in chamber four, it's exactly the same pin except it's been inverted with a thick part on the bottom and the thin part on the top. You would think that that would give you some, some varying feedback. But in fact, because this waist on these two spools is so narrow, it, I really didn't, as you guys saw, I really didn't detect any, any, um, uh, uh, counter rotation of any kind, nor did I detect any fault sets. So when you got a tiny little waist like that on a spool, that's kind of what you'd expect. And these other three chambers, we have not spools, but all standard pins. Why they would choose to do that, I can't begin to tell you. Spool pins are just as cheap as standard pins, but hey, we got what we got. Anyway, everything is now, as you see, the key is in it. It's lined up perfectly at the shear line. So if I turn it, you will see it start to, if I can put a little wedge on it there. Oh, they didn't pop out. So you can see it start to break right there at the shear line perfectly, exactly the way we'd expect. And if I continue to turn it, I'm sure those top pins are going to pop down there. There we go. They've now popped down. There's nothing to restrain them. Anyway, it still works perfectly, which was surprising when you machine things as close as I did, but it, it did kind of work out for all of us. Anyway, guys, I appreciate your time. Stay safe, stay legal, and thanks to the tiny, tiny island of the United Kingdom for producing a lock with uh, these tight tolerances. Thanks, guys.